Hello, everyone, and welcome to another episode of Code Emporium, where we're going to talk about the probability mass function. So let's get to it. So just to kick it off, probability mass functions are probability distribution functions for discrete random variables. For a lot of these concepts, like discrete and continuous random variables and probability distribution functions themselves, I have created separate videos. So if you want a lot more details, please do check them out. But I'm going to explain everything from an initial concept of an experiment and try to tie probability mass functions here to some real world concept. So let's get started. Now imagine that you are conducting an experiment. It's a really simple experiment that just involves you taking a pen and paper, going outside, and just people watching. So every time a person passes by you, you take a note of their hair color as well as some approximation of their height. So for example, if one person passes me when I'm doing this experiment, let's say that they have brown hair and they are about 165 centimeters in height. And now maybe some time passes and another person passes by me. I'm gonna call this person number two. They have, let's say black hair and their height is 160 centimeters. Now, over time, we're going to be, let's say, documenting every person that walks by us for about 10 minutes. And so now we have a list of observations here. And this is our entire experiment setup. And now that we conducted this kind of experiment, we can actually ask ourselves a few interesting questions. Now, one of these questions could be, during this single experiment, how many people have walked past us? And maybe another question could be, what is the average height of all the people who walked past you? All right, so how many people walked past you? So to answer this question, let's introduce some notation. I am going to call some variable omega one. And omega one is going to represent the outcome of this experiment, specifically answering this question. So in this case, omega one, let's say that it's 10 people that passed us. And this is an outcome. Next, let's say that um, because this is an outcome, I want to create a random variable for this specific question. And I'm going to call that random variable a capital X1. And this is now, random variables are functions inherently that take into account the outcome of an experiment and it maps it to some measurable quantity. In this case, it's going to be some, some number. In this case, it's going to represent the number of people itself. And I'm going to just say this is 10. Now, random variables I'm introducing here because now they help us convert some real world experiment to an actual number, which we can perform some mathematics on. Now, let's do the same for this second question over here. The average height of people who walked past you Let's say the outcome here is going to be represented by omega two. And I'm going to say that this is 165.32 centimeters. And the random variable corresponding to this outcome, let's call it X two, um, X two of omega two, because now X two is a random variable. So it is a function and it maps this outcome to a measurable quantity. And in this case, it's going to be 165.32. So this is great. Random variables now are able to help us 
you know, quantify some questions like these. But there are some other questions that we might want to ask. So for example, we conducted this single experiment, but how had we conducted, you know, maybe this experiment differently or another time, we could have very well gotten different values for the outcomes and these random variables. So a question that I want to ask now is what is the probability of me seeing three people walk past me during the experiment? So let's write that out on a new sheet. Now for this question, I'm going to start talking about random variables and then segue into probability mass function and how it is related here. So in the previous question, well, we, we introduced a random variable called x1 that represents a numeric quantity of the number of people who walked past you. Now, and the corresponding outcome of that was omega one. Now this random variable over here can take a few values. So there could have been, for example, one person who passed us or zero people who passed us or two people or three people or four people who passed us and so on. So the random variable itself, because it takes only numeric quantities, could have been zero. It could have been one. It could have been two. It could have been three. It could have been any number and so on. And I'm just going to call it over here. And this entire set of values that it could have taken, well, it is a subset of natural numbers. Because natural numbers also go from 0, 1, 2, 3. More importantly, this is actually a countable set. And any countable set, if a random variable takes on values of a countable set, it is said to be a discrete random variable. So x1 is a discrete random variable. Now to talk about how this is related to probability mass functions, let's actually draw a graph. I'm going to call the x-axis, well, I'll just call it x1 because that is the random variable of concern. And the y-axis is going to be the probability of x1. I'm just going to say this p here. This p is going to stand for a probability distribution function. It is standard mathematical notation. And this here, this graph, which I'm going to write, is the probability distribution function across this random variable x1. Now, the different values that x1 can take are these set of values. So let's write that on the x-axis. So that's 0, that's 1, that's 2, that's 3, 4, 5. And we can kind of go on with this notation. And let's say now that the probability distribution for each of these looks something like this, where we have 0 has this corresponding probability. Then we have one that might look something like this, a little higher. Then two would be a little lower. Then three would be even lower. And four would be even lower. And five would be even lower. And maybe it just keeps tapering on from there. So this here is a probability distribution function. And because this is a probability distribution function over a discrete random variable, we call this also a probability mass function. So probability mass function is a probability distribution function over a discrete random variable. And discrete random variables are countable. They have very distinct values. And so we can represent them with these rectangular bars where the y-axis represents some probability value. I hope that's all super clear. Now let's get on to some more mathematical notation. So typically, if we want to represent a probability distribution function, I'm going to write this out with white, we are going to call it 
P, capital P of X, this is gener generic notation. This is equal to some value X. And this is a value that lies between zero and one. So this is, P is a probability distribution function, it's standard notation. Capital X, in this case, it's capital X one. This is a random variable. And this small x over here is just a normal variable that can take on some value. It could be like one of these values, for example, that is just probably unknown to us right now. Now, a typical, you know, more specific notation for probability mass function would be, well, doing something like this, where we write this, well, this is a small p over here, and we put the random variable as a subscript, so that's x1 as a subscript, and then uf, we'll say small value x is, again, this will be now a probability that belongs to zero or one. So this is just an alternative notation to write, uh, or a more specific notation uh, to, to represent the probability mass function. Now, this probability mass function has two properties. So let's talk about both of them. The first property here is going to be that these, each of these probability masses are a value that lies between zero and one. And it's a value that's greater than or equal to zero in general. So we say that, well, I'm gonna say P of X one is equal to X this is going to be greater than or equal to zero. Or what we can write again, or we have our standard notation here. It's the P of small p with a subscript x1 for the random variable of x is greater than or equal to zero. And this is for all values of, of that x can possibly take. So this is an interesting property and it illustrates the, the word of mass here. Like why do we even have mass? It's very clear that probability, okay, so the y-axis represents a probability value. It's a function because the probability distribution function, it is a function of this random variable or rather an event, like a condition over here in the parentheses. But why mass? So in our original question, what we want to know is what is the probability mass of three people walking past you. Now, in this case, well, zero, one, two, three, the corresponding probability mass, well, we're interested in just this, this bar over here. Now, this bar, the corresponding probability mass will be the y-axis that corresponds to whatever this bar is saying. That is the probability mass. So there is some mass associated with every single value that this random variable may take, or every single value of the outcome of our experiment. It will be associated with some mass. And that's kind of why we write, or that's kind of like an intuitive understanding of like why we call this a probability mass function. A mass, it's because it's a value that's greater than or equal to zero. And this mass is kind of, clearly like similar to um, the definition in physics where mass is some quantity that has some measurable, potentially even non-zero value. Now let's go on to the second property over here. If we were to take the sum of all of these probability masses for every single value of this random variable that it can take, we would get one. So what we would write, it would be sigma over all possible values of small x is going to be the probability, this is capital P, so this is generic notation, that x1 is equal to x, this is going to be equal to one. Or in our wonderful notation, we could say sigma over x, the small p, the probability mass function for the random variable x1 over all values of x is equal to one for all x. And this is basically going to say, well, if any of the probability that any of these events occur is definite, it is going to be one. 
And so this set corresponds to the total possible values that the random variable can take. So overall, I hope this understanding of probability mass functions is super clear. And why this concept of mass becomes super important is you will actually see it when we talk about continuous random variables instead. And you will see then that continuous random variables have a zero mass. So for a specific exact value of like some value. So if you were to say like, if this was a continuous random variable, this mass would be zero for all points. And we'll get into details of exactly why that is the case. Now for more details on overall like probability mass functions and also how it ties with machine learning, I'm gonna have a blog post on Medium and I'll link that down in the description below. So please do check that out when it does come out. Also do follow me on YouTube and also on Medium where I'll be writing a lot and it's a lot easier to just write about these technical concepts in more detail on some written platform rather than probably just outlining everything on the video. But I hope this entire video gave you a good generic understanding of what probability mass functions entail. And so that'll be it for today. Thank you all so much for watching and I will see you in the next one. Bye-bye.